today to show you how to assemble a Steinway 600,000 piano. This is a one-of-a-kind piano that's different than all other pianos by the fact it doesn't have three legs. So there's a special setup to assemble the piano and disassemble the piano. And you, as you can see behind me, there's a special crate to assist us in that. Uh, there's three crates. One contains the bench, and inside the bench crate is a set of tools to start the process of setting up the second crate, which is this one here, that has hoses the piano case in it. Um, and then there's a third crate that has the base in, inside of it. All right, we'll start by removing the bench from the crate. So there's two compartments in this crate. One houses the bench on one side that's wrapped in a plastic bag. And the other compartment is a bag full of tools. There's a box for spare parts. In this box contains extra bolts, extra wheels for the base, um, and extra screws. Um, every bag in here is labeled where the bolts go. Inside the tool bag, you also notice that there's a jar of lubricant. This is for the stainless steel bolts. All the bolts are mostly stainless steel um, and they're in stainless steel housings. And if you have to change out a bolt to a new bolt, if you do not use a lubricant, it could gall and seize on you. Also in the crate is a set of gloves. This, the piano has a very high finish on it, gloss finish. Fingerprints will show up and it'll take time to clean up if on stage. So the more that you can protect it, by not getting grease from the bolts onto the piano by wearing the gloves it benefits everybody. First step is to set the wheel trusses. So to set the wheel trusses, you need a three quarter inch wrench and socket. To do that, you need to remove these bolts. Jerry, you want to remove these bolts? You have to undo this bolt, and there's another bolt here that will be removed. truss against the side rail and insert the bolts back in and tighten them up. Four bolts on each. Then to remove the screws on the inside, and put the stays in. Same bolt back in your stay. The same to both sides. Both stays all the bolts back in. Pull that up there. straight side of the piano is at the bottom of the crate. So once you figure out the position of the piano in, in its space, you need to orient the crate in that situation, leaving enough space at least seven feet to the long side of the piano to remove the crate from underneath it. I'm going to rotate the crate to show you the drawing on the other side to help orientate it. Go this way. As you can 
see this is the lid side of the piano. So the crate is going to tilt on its back, putting the piano in its upright position. This is the keyboard end, arrow dictating the straight side of the piano. So in this situation, we're going to orientate the piano with the straight side to my left and the keyboard facing away from the camera to do the setup. Let's spin this way here. Okay, to rotate the case down, the best position for the back wheels is for the wheels to be rotated so they're underneath the crate and not rotated so they're outbound of the crate, giving you a better pivot point. So if the wheels are rotated underneath the crate, so they're underneath the surface, underneath, then we need six people. Four people on the back side, one here, one here, two on the other side identically, and two people in the front grabbing a hold of the handles and lifting as the back guys are pulling. The initial force is to get it to tilt over. Once it tilts, it rolls fairly e easily once it's on the cradles. Until you get to the very end, you, you pick up the weight at the last foot. So you don't want it to let it roll too fast. You want to let it roll slow and then counteract the weight and let it down gently. Otherwise, it will come down quickly. Okay, everybody on three. Ready? One, two, three. At this point, the two guys in the front come around to help the four guys in the back to lower the weight. At this point, if your piano is in good position, you could proceed to uncrate it. If it's not, you can move the piano. It's still on wheels on the rollers. It'll move laterally this way easily. If you need to position it this way, it's a little more difficult because the wheels won't roll left to right. You can diagonally move it back and forth to position it if need to, but it does roll relatively easily on these wheels. So at this point, we're gonna take off the lids. There's five pieces, two lids, the front piece and the two sides. All these parts can be disassembled while the piano is still attached to the bottom of the crate. And once you remove the lid number one and lid number two, there are three jack stands inside of here that have to be removed. Otherwise, when you take off the long front side, you'll be picking up the weight of the jack stands. Okay, guys? buckles down when you open them, so when you stack them on the ground they don't get pinched and locked. lids and the jack stands are removed. This part labeled uh, 3C, the front side can be removed. And also at that point you can remove the top foam. Keep the two side buckles attached until all the bottom buckles are removed so that the weight of this thing doesn't roll out on you. As you will see when this is removed, this large section of foam with the box for the jacks comes out with this front side panel. So you guys ready? Lose mic. 
side buckle in place until all the bottom buckles are removed and somebody's holding on to the, the part. Over top of the keyboard there's an additional piece of foam, a loose piece of foam to hold the keyboard cover down. Ready? Yep. Okay. You see here a large piece of foam that goes over top of the keyboard. It's beveled on the inside. Okay, at this point, the piano needs to have the jack stands put onto it. Um, there's three positions one, two, and three. Underneath the piano, you'll see sticking down is the standard. Uh, placement for the piano Steinway legs, and on top is a standard bracket welded to the jack stand. That has to clip on with a dovetail, and then, a, then an Allen screw is tightened, screwed to the front. Okay, the screw should line up where the hole is, you got to rotate the screw, and there's a little hole on the part where it lines the screw up. Once you're up, rotate your screw in. Tighten it all the way. Okay, at this point, the jack can now be, you have to hold the bottom. If you rotate this, it doesn't do anything. You have to hold the bottom section and rotate your jack stand to lower it to the ground. At this point, you just want to put a little bit of a weight. You don't want to lift the piano because it is still bolted to the crate. Once all three jack stands are secured and with light pressure to the floor, the bolts underneath the crate have to be removed. There are three bolts from the bottom of the crate going into the bottom of the piano. We'll do that step next. These are the front two jack stands. They're in a little forward position. The bolt on the right hand side is on the outside of the jack stand. And on the left hand side, the bolt to lock it is on the inside. Um, obvious to see because you can't get to it with the crate in position. So that's why this one bolt location is on the inside of the piano and not on the outside of the piano. The front two jack stands are slightly lower than the, than the back jack stand. The back jack stand will be painted black to indicate that it's different. Okay. In the rear of the piano, you'll see this aluminum sleeve that contains a, a, a half inch bolt that goes up into the piano from the bottom of the crate. This one you have to crawl underneath under, behind the truss and loosen this bolt. The bolt won't fall out because it's kept into the sleeve with a pin. So you have to remove this bolt and the two in the front before the piano can be lifted off of the crate. Okay, all attaching bolts are recessed into a stainless steel cup. You need your three quarter inch socket again to remove the bolt. Once again, once the bolt is removed, it will not fall out but it will drop down, okay? So that's the rear bolt. Okay, now in the front of the piano, there's two more aluminum sleeves right behind the jack stands with a corresponding bolt underneath in the same stainless steel cup that have to be removed. So you have one here and one back in here. drops down when it's loose. At this point, the piano is now free from the crate, and we can lift the piano to the proper height to remove the crate from underneath it. At this point, we're going to raise the piano, turning the three jack stands simultaneously to raise the piano. The height of the, of the jack stand will be determined by a hole in the metal below the, the turning knob. It's approximate, the, the height will be approximately written on here is 27 inches on the front jack stands, 
believe it's 29 inches on the back jack stand. All right, guys, raise it up. Once you have the piano lifted slightly off the way of the crate, you want to pull this just slightly back because this is very close to the edge of the piano. And this just ensures that as you go up, you're not going to ride on, on the wood. Okay, the reference point is if the top of the piano is even with the top of the brace on the crate, front and back, you know you've raised your piano high enough. And to watch, there's several things to look for as you roll your crate out and in underneath the piano. On the back side, you have the brass pin that has to be higher than your blocking and your aluminum pin. This aluminum pin is fixed by the bolt and will not fall out. So that has to clear the side of the piano. Then we'll go around to the front and look at the other points. So on the front of the piano, again, you have the aluminum that's fixed by the bolt that can't be removed. That has to clear all the trap work and the blocking underneath the piano. The other thing that watch is that this arm hangs below and needs to be held up as you roll the crate or the base in and out from underneath the piano. So this is the main concern, is this arm and the two aluminum stanchions that are sticking up high. At this point, with one guy watching the front, you should be able to roll your crate out from underneath the piano. Okay. So as they pull out the crate, the guy in the front holds up the upper part, watching out for his fingers and the blocks. Okay, watch the, hold on. Watch the piano cover as you come out that doesn't get stuck on the blocking. All right, on that side back there. All right, and you are clear to remove. As you roll the piano crate out, make sure you don't put downward pressure on those two guys as the front of the, the crate can lift up and hit the piano. You want to show the crate for a second? So if you guys lean down, You'll see this pops up in the air if they have downward pressure. You don't want to push this into the bottom of the piano. So you want to roll out low on the crate and pull it out even. At this point, you can reassemble your crate and get it out of the way. We can just go around to that side of the piano because I think Are we're going to tip that. Yeah. Yeah. This is the base crate. The bottom of the base crate, which will be down when you tilt the crate over, um, needs sufficient room because then there's a lift gate that drops down and the piano base rolls out this way. So if you're dropping your base in this direction, you need to leave enough room for the base to roll out. Before you drop the base, two things you have to do. You have to remove four bolts. One, two, three, and four. Those four bolts are securing the base, which is a spiral that looks like this, inside of the crate. Once you remove those four bolts, you have to extend your, your tilting arms. Your tilting arm is a rod inside of the handle. On the bottom of the rod, there's a screw. You may need your wrenches to remove this screw. Sliding your handle up, once you extend your handle up to the red portion, lining the red on top of your handle, rotating your rod to find your screw hole. Replacing your screw and your nut. Unlike the piano, these bolts have to be totally removed. Okay, at this point, you need six guys minimum. Four guys on the back side to lift, and two guys on either side. As soon as the momentum is off the wheels, you need guys to come around and catch the weight. Um, at least four guys, two on each end. Um, again, 
The hardest part is getting the momentum tilted off the wheels. Okay? You guys ready? Ready? Yep. One, two, two three. three. Okay. on the ground, your best effort is to remove the rod, push the rods back in so you don't trip over them. But you still have three or four inches sticking out to catch you in your shins. Okay, same as the back side, the front side, the top, has three bolts going into the top of the, the piano base before you can remove the lids. So you'll have one, two, and three in the stainless steel cups, same three quarter inch wrench to remove those. And then after that, you have a hasp on the center, which this bolt needs to be removed to take off lid number two. Lid number one comes off, then you remove your bolt and you can take off lid number two. Guys, we're gonna unbolt this. You can start undoing the latches. And these bolts need to be totally removed. shorter bolt on the lid. The shorter bolt goes by itself on the far side. We'll have the number written there. Short bolt. Um, so this has to be removed. Get that ratchet there. As the lid number one is removed, you can see the points where the bolts are going into on the base. So one on either end of the front steel rod, and then you can see number two. This bolt has to be removed for the second lid to come out. Okay, lid number two can be taken off. see the position of the bolt for the back lid. Okay. At this time, this front ramp, there's two hasps on either side with the same bolt have to be removed and this front lid drops, the front ramp drops down. Labeled 3B. fingers as this ramp comes down. Okay, yeah, the two stainless steel ramps have four wing nuts holding them down. You need to remove the four wing nuts and flip your ramps over. And afterwards, there's two locking blocks. Same three quarter inch wrench to remove your two blocks. And then, you have to be careful that this is on a tilt and the base is on wheels. You don't want it to roll away on you. So somebody needs to hold the base after those two blocks are removed. Like I said, the base is on small wheels, and I'll show you the locations of the wheels in a minute. You can say one. So you have that ratchet grid right there. Yes. Okay. Is there a spot for these or no? no. See the two blocks are removed. These blocks bolts won't come out of. So you don't have to worry about losing those. Again, this is on an uphill slope and it's on wheels. So you should have somebody maintaining a hold on it so it doesn't roll down. There are four wheels on this piano. As you would think, a wheel would be underneath this large section, but there's none. There's one wheel on the outside of the small post another wheel on the outside of this post, so two wheels in the front, 
The other two wheels in the back are on either side of the back post. So you have two wheels back here. So as you're going down the ramp, you want to consider where your wheels are. Um, as you get into the final position, the pedals are about a half inch away and the tail is about an inch away. So you have to be very careful of the two sides as you're rolling out. And you can see that we felt lined to two sides. Okay. You guys want to roll it down? six to seven hundred pounds. So that's why you want to maintain pressure on it while you're rolling it down the hill. At this point we're ready to roll it underneath the piano. You want to orientate it in the right direction and again check your clearance. Make sure your piano is high enough as you roll under to clear everything. So we're going to rotate our, our base. Come away from the piano mic, pull it away. Now another good thing to do is on your jack stands, maybe to turn your handles so they're outbound and not inbound on the piano. Jerry, turn that jack stand handle. Okay, Mike, wanna turn that handle. Okay. So before we roll this underneath the piano, there are three spots you have to look out for. This is a very important spot right here. This smaller column nestles into the rim of the piano with only an eighth inch of space around it. If you misalign the base and drop the piano down onto this rim, you will do visual damage to the column and the piano. Anywhere else the piano lands on, it's landing underneath onto the steel. So as it rolls under, these two points on the piano, this bar, recesses into a cup. You'll see the cup where the bolts from the case were into perfectly matches this shape. If you position these two shapes directly under those cups and gently lower it down, everything else falls into place. Okay? And you don't want to start with the rear pin and you don't want to start with one side and the rear pin. You want the two front pins, posts, lining up directly with the cups. You want the cups to fall into place while the rear pin of the piano is still hovering above the back. If you lower the back into the piano first and then try to lower the front in, you may not be able to align it correctly. So you want to get the piano lowered within an inch above the three points and then lower your front into place, keeping an eye on your small column. The other main factor again is there's a bracket from the key bed here from the action that hangs down. That silver bar needs to be held up while the piano is rolling underneath so you don't get it caught up. And as you're lowering the piano down, to make sure that that doesn't get jammed up on, the, on, the, on, the, on your rods. All right, guys? Just make sure we have enough clearance. This is kind of looking a little close. Hold it. Okay, all right. Um, We're gonna need to go forward. Okay, easy. All right, we need to move on forwards. Jerry, switch your hand, hold mm -hmm. on. Good. Okay. 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 Mike, push it to me. Keep going. Can I hold it? Pull it back that way. So, I don't know if you can see on the video, the cup inside of the bottom of the piano painted black, there's a metal stainless steel cup. This section of the arm fits into this section of the cup. And as long as, as you lower it, you get the front two members into that cup first, with keeping the back within an inch, but not dropping into the piano. Everything should line up perfectly. There's one other section. As you lower, right here, there's a leather strip mounted on the, on the wood. As you lower the piano, 
this spot right here is tight to this leather. So this is the first thing you really gotta make sure slips past the leather as you lower down. Okay. Let's lower it down closer to the, to the piano. Watching the, la the leather in the back there, making sure we're not too close. Do you want me to lower also? Yeah. But you're gonna kinda lag behind us. Right, exactly. Okay, that's good. Make sure our rod is clear here. Okay. All right, we're falling in on the leather. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close too. I think okay. I'm clear in here. Yeah. All right, I'm going down. Might come down just a little bit. All right. I'm uh, looking real good. I'm looking real good too. Okay. I'm good too here. <laughs> All right, I'm in. I'm just in. How are you? All right, so this this is the critical spot that you have to be aware of. The column fits into the rim of the piano. It's circle cut into it. If the front two locations are lined up properly, it slips in at no problem. But if you lower the piano too fast and you're not lined up, you can damage the column in the bottom of the piano. Okay. After the piano has weight has been transferred to the base, you can remove the jack stands. Once the jack stands are removed, there are three bolts that attach the base to the piano. In our tool bag, there's a separate bag that says base to piano, holding three bolts. They're the only bolts in the tool bag. The rest of the bolts are spare bolts that are in a box marked spare bolts. So I'll show you the three locations on the base that attaches the piano. The important thing is to grab a piece of foam. Sorry, get me a small piece of foam. Because as you're putting the bolts up into the piano, you don't lose a bolt and drop it onto the base. Okay, so it's better to have a moving blanket or take a piece of film foam from the section of the crate and place it down over the base where you're putting the bolts in. So underneath the piano, there's two locations, right behind the front two columns. There's a hole up in here. It takes the larger half inch bolt. It's a short bolt. Screws right in. Again, maintain your, your holding on and you don't drop the bolt and do any damage. The second bolt is on the opposite side behind that one. You can go around and do that. Again. Third location is on near the rear column. Again, protecting your base in case you drop your bolt. There's one, there's two holes. The one hole that's threaded is the hole from the crate. The second hole that's open, that the bolt slips through, is the bolt to attach to the piano. A smaller bolt, I believe it's a 9 16 wrench. Now that the piano is bolted to the base, it is on wheels and will move. It's not an easy move, um, so you don't want to roll it around the room more than you have to. The wheels are a small diameter, and there's a lot of pressure on the small diameter wheels. Um, as far as your lid now, if you come around to the front of the piano, underneath the lid for packing purposes, all right, you lift your lid. We have foam that is set in to keep the music board from moving. And we have the leather. Lift a little on that lid a little bit, go down a little bit. And we'll put that underneath there. Got it? Oh, you have to Take the leather support. And that is your pad to keep your your two lids from scratching. A little uh, grease on the edge. So now you have couple pieces of foam in the front, which we should magic marker. This foam here is to keep your music stand from moving in transit as it will slide back and forth. It cannot come up. Also with the lid on it, it can't come up, but it will slide back and forth. 